This is the all-new Rene, an immensely powerful performance sequencer module from Make Noise. The original Rene garnered both praise and prominence for its innovative Cartesian sequencing mode, which of course has been passed along to this second generation. But this highly anticipated revision also delivered significant upgrades, most notably the inclusion of two additional channels for a total of three independent sequencers. Users of the original Rene will be excited to discover that it's no longer necessary to choose between the Cartesian sequencing mode and the snake pattern mode. Both modes are now available simultaneously. The familiar 4x4 grid of knobs provide immediate step programming access, but now also display color-coded visual feedback, allowing fast, intuitive multi-channel sequence programming. Vastly improved touch plates allow real-time interaction with the wide array of performance and programming options for each channel. The all-new Z-axis gives users the ability to store all program settings into any one of 64 memory locations, also known as states. Once saved, states can be recalled at the touch of a button. And state selection can be externally modulated in real time, allowing for a third dimension of pattern programming options. Rene also can be set to utilize the Select Bus Communication Protocol, allowing states to be saved or recalled in sync with other Select Bus enabled modules, such as the Make Noise Tempe. All of this makes it possible to generate and modulate complex layers, polyrhythmic patterns, or multi voice melodies. In this first part of a two video series, I'll provide an overview of both Cartesian and Snake modes while demonstrating basic sequencing and programming functions. Make sure to check out part two for a demonstration of more advanced features, including states and the all new Z axis. So let's get started. I'll begin constructing a sequence using just the X channel, and it all starts with a clock. I'll inject an eighth note pulse, and the sequence will begin charting a course through the 16 step locations laid out in a 4x4 grid. Each step has a knob, which will light up to indicate the current pattern position, providing real-time visual feedback. Turning a knob will alter the outgoing voltage level for that location. The results are sent to the XCV output, which, in this case, is currently patched to the 1 volt per octave input of a VCO. As each location is reached, a gate signal is generated as well. And I've tapped into that by patching the X gate output to the CV input of an envelope generator, which is in turn controlling a VCA. Now let's take a look at some of the ways to utilize the program pages to add some life to this sequence. It's important to understand that both the X and Y channels operate in what is referred to as snake mode. This means the path taken through the sequence steps is dictated by the currently selected snake pattern. I can choose a new snake pattern by navigating to the snake page. The currently active snake pattern also happens to be the simplest, a strictly sequential progression from location 1 through location 16. I'll use the touch plates to select a new pattern. Observe the knob lights you can immediately see that the sequence is traveling in a different step order. I'll try another. And another. Until I find one that I like. There are 16 available snake patterns, one assigned to each touch plate location. They range from straightforward linear patterns to creatively complex paths. Pattern selection can also be modulated via external CV, but we're going to take a look at that in the next video. 
I'll once again use the left and right arrow buttons to navigate the program pages, this time landing on the Access page. Here, I can enable or disable steps at will by pressing the touch plates which correspond to the desired location. Disabled locations will be skipped completely, resulting in variable sequence lengths. The gate page will allow me to choose which of the active steps will output a simultaneous gate signal. This is an easy way to develop increasingly intricate rhythms. Only the step's gate output will be silenced. Changes in the CV output will still occur for a location with a disabled gate. I'll develop additional rhythmic interest by increasing the complexity of my clock input. As you might expect, the glide page adds a glide or portamento type effect to chosen locations. And the quantize page allows users to quantize the CV output to specific note values. The bottom three rows of touch plates have note value assignments, and they can be seen at the top left of each plate. Custom scales are created by enabling or disabling the desired note. As each location is reached, one of the activated notes will blink, so it's easy to see what note is being played at each step. The top row allows for octave range selection from 1 to 4. It's also possible to completely disable quantization for the full range of control voltage values, which could be useful when utilizing the channel's CV output for modulating other parameters besides pitch. As you might have noticed, all of these program page edits were made in real time. The sequence never stops. I can continually make changes without interruption. Just like the X channel, the Y channel operates in snake mode, and the programming workflow is exactly the same. Just press the Y channel button, and the interface lights will switch to green, indicating that you're now editing the Y channel. I'll insert a different clock signal into the Y clock input, and patch the Y CV and Y gate outputs to my preferred destination. Now both channels are operating simultaneously, but independently. The X channel CV output was already set up to control the pitch of an oscillator. The Y channel CV output is patched to the same oscillator. It's being used to modulate a timbral shaping parameter, animating the tone of the melodic sequence. I can easily switch back and forth between channels and make edits on the fly, experimenting until I'm satisfied with the sequence. But what about the C channel, also known as the Cartesian channel? Switching to the Cartesian channel shows movement through the step locations, but you might have noticed that I did not need to insert an additional clock signal. That's because the C channel doesn't need its own clock, but more on that in a moment. Like X and Y, the C channel possesses an independent CV and gate output, and I'll use them to create a second melodic sequence originating from a different oscillator. I'll isolate the audio generated by the new C channel sequence. Without its own clock input, how does the C channel sequencer run? By directly receiving the clock signals patched to X and Y. Watch as I remove the Y clock. The C channel sequence only moves horizontally through the step locations. If I replace the Y clock and remove the X clock, the C channel only moves vertically. 
It's only when both X and Y clocks are present will the Cartesian channel navigate through the horizontal and vertical axes. Programming the C channel is primarily the same as X and Y, with a few exceptions. You could still do things like programming the CV values at each location, or enabling or disabling steps and gates. However, there is a notable difference between X and Y and C, and that's the lack of a snake mode. That's because snake patterns aren't relevant here. The sequence step order is exclusively determined by the navigation coordinates generated as a result of the X and Y clocks. And therefore the snake pattern page is automatically skipped when browsing through the program pages. Let me add the original sequence back into the mix. You can hear that I've got two complementary melodic sequences that are related to each other, but that remain wholly independent. In the next video, I'll dive deeper into the various programming options and edit parameters available to help harness more of Renee's considerable creative potential. I'll also discuss the ability to edit, save, and recall the memory locations known as states. And I'll introduce the powerful new Z-Plane feature, which adds a whole new dimension to sequencing with Renee.